Hello, my name is Isabel. I am a teacher, an architect and an artist and I teach using all of these experiences and practices. This essay arises from the analysis of learning exercises assigned to first year design studio at University Lusofna from Lisboa. These exercises have an overarching theme, the architectural forest. We think it's important that architectural teaching and learning begin with reflection on what is architecture, on how we inhabit the space that surrounds us, and how we can record, communicate the ideas on the spaces that we experiment and imagine. Stemming from the relation between thought and action, students are challenged to create drawings, models and objects, relating mental and manual activities, without recourse to restrictive rules and hard set instructions. The teacher promotes what is known as divergent thinking, the thinking of artists, researchers and innovators, searching all possible solutions by experimental methodology by trier and error. Creative activity thus makes familiar what is strange and reveals what was thought to be already known to be often strange. The creative and transformative potential resides in these dynamics, and the focus is set on the exploratory, scientific spirit encored on the ideas of discovery. For most of our students, architecture is still a strange place. Many arrive with preconceptions, others with wrong certainties, and others hesitating on their course choice but all of them expecting to learn how to make houses. To address this and to free them from preset views on what is architecture, the first step of the rhythm learning concept is to place students in the unexpected medium we call architectural forest. The aim is that students look for a shelter where they can take refuge, leading them to understand the importance of building an identity that allows them to face the challenges in architectural project, with the awareness that any construction begin by its foundation. Let's be clear, in face of the contact with the cities in which they are immersed, students must explore and develop their own concepts and tools for work and analysis of the space they inhabit. Our cities have become forests indeed. This is a concept that we can interpret according to the increasingly complex and often alienating urban spaces that we live in. Issues of scale, form, rhythm, time, overlap and dialogue with our inner space, our own dreams, expectations, values, a hostage of the digital era that simultaneously seduces and entraps us in a virtual context that we do not master fostering a feeling of insecurity, as Sigmar Bauman uh, describes in his City of Fear, City of Hopes. Bien Shul Han, in his burnout society, also warns us about the excess of stimuli and information to which we are daily exposed, and establishes a parallel between current society and wildlife, reaching the conclusion that man, like the animal in the wild, must be watchful about all that surrounds him. This is the reason why man is losing perceptive capacities, tools let getting ever more fragmented and scattered, and instead developing a new form of awareness that Han calls hypertension. Proof of this is shown by the way students and the general population use the internet in a variety of devices to engage multitasking and simultaneous conversation. This does not favor the contemplative awareness proper to the creative and artistic processes. According to Han, the contemplative capacity can be only ransomed by heart and by culture, both propitiating the deep attention. Paul Cézanne, a master of contemplative deep attention, once remarked he could see the progress of things. This visualization of things requires profound attention. According to Bernice Rose, Cezanne establishes the turning point from which drawing stops being just a preparatory medium for the work of art 
and constitutes itself as the form of its execution, that is, become autonomous through the dynamics of doing. The fracture that Cezanne started later taken to the limit by cubism and abstract art makes evident the two components of drawing, the conceptual and autographical, and we want to work upon these two. On the other hand, forest, as a concept for the architectural space, offers ample stimuli for peripheric vision, or the type of phenomenological vision that Palasma defends to more truly apprehend space itself. In his own words, a walk through a forest is invigorating and healing due to the constant interaction of all sense modalities. Bachelard talks about the polyphony of the senses. The eye collaborates with the body and other senses. One sense of reality is strengthened and articulated by this constant interaction. Architecture is ultimately an extension of nature in the anthropogenic sphere, providing the ground for perception and the horizon of the experimentation and understanding of the world. Architect So Fujimoto is also interested in the relation between forests and architecture. In his Architecture as a Forest, an exhibition of his work at Centro Cultural de Belém in Lisbon, Fujimoto defends the idea that future architecture will resemble a forest. All will be harmonized in the diversity that will be the main character of the, this future city. This new space will emerge from the relation between order and chaos. By the light of this conception, Fujimoto shows a set of projects from the smallest even microscopic architecture to colossal buildings and urban structures. Some have been built, others are still to be built, and many are representations of ideas. We want to reflect on the value of these last ones, the ideas. Forest alludes to natural space, but also to the city space. The complexity of forms, sounds, colors, elements, repetitions, roots, height, light, shadow, and so on, are characteristics that we can find both in the natural forest as in the urban forest, and that evoke diverse states of mind. The exercise challenges the students to think of on these formal and psychological aspects, and to interpret them by selecting from their context the motives that impress them the most. Either by imagining themselves in the natural or urban landscape, or following the purpose of this exercise, imagining themselves in a geometrical abstract forest, it is expected that students will represent spatial or emotional conceptions proper to human relation with space through specific forms of conceptual and abstract communication, models and sketches. Lastly, the exercise aims to showcase the work of several architects and thinkers on the international architectural panorama, since that, following the rhizom learning concept that we defend, students will cross theoretical and practical knowledge relating architecture to philosophy, the visual arts, cinema, story, and other related subjects. Students are then asked to create objects that, thought still devoid of function, can already be considered architectural objects, being the result of the materialization of ideas answering a program that sets as a problem and thus enunciates distinct architectural dimensions, such as thought, emotion, form, content, organic, geometric, mass, void, light, shadow, light, heavy, or path, scale, and materials. The psychological, compositive, and formal aspects are perceived, experimented, and tested through a methodology implying the constant dialogue between the materiality of thought in the materiality of the representation. The reciprocal relation between 2 and 3D representations 
is test so that when passing from thought idea to form, the representation capacities of both drawing and physical model are explored. The purpose is to present right from the first semester the understanding of the importance of the conception of the images and objects that are created to represent the ideas in architecture, either drawing, models or a written test. Also, to understand that these representations are charged with meaning and that if they are the attempt to materialize an idea, they also acquire autonomy and suggest new possibilities. It is this dialectic play of formal experiences that consolidates the idea without which any architecture is void. The performer and conceptual visual artist Esther Ferrer has developed a series of space installations little known, mostly due to the non-availability of means and space. Nevertheless, Ferrer developed her project for years through drawing and artisanal models. Ferrer considers space, both natural and architectural, as her raw material over which she works three fundamental elements, time, space and presence. In her book, Maquetas y Desenhos de Instalaciones, Ferrer explains that when developing a special project, space matters, not only when she is model making, but also when thinking about her own actions. She says, Model making is an activity that gives me a lot of satisfaction. Manual work relaxes me and the physical model allows me to work with much tranquility. It is not a finite object. It is a project that evolves as I am conceiving it and that sometimes, happily, and due to the freedom that it allows me when working, takes me along pathways that I would never imagined. When I am in the making process, I do not look for perfection, but instead to visualize an idea. That is, the model becomes tangible and thus real. So. The artist declares, if I have the opportunity to build the model in a real space, great, but if not, that is not a problem. Actually, I never had a lot of interest in realizing my project in a real, large-scale space. If the model I am making work, then for me, the work is done. Here we should note that we are witnessing a change in the traditional relation between reality and representation. Many artists and architects show by their work that we do no longer evolve from model to reality, but from model to model, recognizing that both are real and that by stopping to be polarized modalities, they now work at the same level. Olafur Eliasson highlights the idea that models become co-producers of reality. Thus, in resorting to these examples shown and discussed in the classroom, we are challenging the preconceived notion that most students have that the model, and the drawing as well, are media of representation that are posterior to the conception of the idealized object. If we want to apply the reason learning concept, it is important to stress the fundamental role of the physical model as a tool for the process of conception ideation. In a similar way to the reflection suggested on the autonomy of the drawing, we too propose to students when developing this exercise that they understand that model cannot be the translation of higher state ideas, since it is in the materialization execution process that the idea appears with clarity. Stephen Hall, in his preface of The Eyes of the Skin, Architecture in the Senses, writes on the contact he had with Palasma's architecture. The way spaces feel, the sound and the smell of these places, has equal weight to the way things look. This testimony shows that it is possible to reach the desired correspondence between ideas and built reality. Such correspondence results from a careful project research, the stages of which stimulate phenomenological insights. The concept used by Hall 
to characterize plasma practice. To resume, we want to stress the importance of stimulating the various senses in the training of the project practice. After problematizing the concept architectural forest, it is asked of students that they visit a densely arborized natural space, referring to the idea of forest, and also that they wander across the city of Lisbon. In both spaces, natural and artificial, it is asked that students choose both a psychological emotive aspect and a special formal one, and that, out of the two, they make 2 and 3D representations, taking care that each is not the representation of the other one. The complexity implied in selecting just one feeling and one physical aspect out of each visited environment compels to an exercise of careful analysis, promoting the individual phenomenological understanding of the site. It is also proposed that students write a paragraph justifying their selections. The presentation of their ideas and sensations in class generates a map of diversified concepts revealing a number of aspects that characterize architecture. It is asked of students that they materialize both emotions and special characteristics through free, intuitive, experimentation of a number of distinct materials and matters like pencil, paint, paper, cardboard, modeling clay, metal, wire, cloth, cotton, plaster, cement, wood, wash, photography, sound and even video. Students will represent both emotion and space in drawing and in physical model, the model not representing the drawing and the drawing not representing the model, both having in common only the search for the representation of a team. The purpose is to acquaint the students with the distinct possibilities of representation of an idea and that they develop the abstract sensitive capacity to find complementarities that reinforce the communication power of the concept that they want to transmit. Can one have creative ideas and the capacity to execute them without the necessity of executing a single sketch or a physical model? Conceptual art has affirmed the supremacy of the idea over material reality. Still, the necessity to communicate thinking necessitates some mediation. In this sense, we could interpret the champ ready-made as a mediation between Federico Zucari's internal drawing and external drawing, concepts that Lino Cabezas proposes to be a division between the idea arising in the artist's mind and its plastic expression. At this formative stage, we think that the best way to bring on students' understanding of this relation between the internal and external drawing lies on the experimentation and artistic practice, thus architectural complexity and the representation of its spatial and conceptual elements can be introduced at an early stage through plastic experimentation. It is not by chance that Lino Gonçalves, in his heart discovers childhood, declares that plastic expression widens the human capacity for understanding, thus concluding that all people have the right to be educated according to their nature. Free expression constitutes one of the indispensable factors for the harmonious development of individuals. So, we do not set limits or rules for scale, color or material. Students are completely free to explore all forms and ideas that they decide, with complete freedom of representation. This freedom, justly so, constitutes the largest obstacle that students must overcome. They ask for more directive exercises with accurate indication on material specific scale and other work directions that do not promote physiomatic learning and phenomenological focus. By the end of the process, most students acknowledge the benefits of these experiments and learn to play, and this is the key verb, they learn to play with the distinctive analogical tools 
that still are, in our opinion, fundamental in the development of the architecture project, because it reapproximates students to a forgotten making by hand. In the words of Palasma, computer creates the distance between the creator and his object, while both drawing by hand and the elaboration of conventional models put the creator in a tactile contact with the object or space. In our imagination, the object is simultaneously in our hands and inside our head, and the projected created image is modeled by our bodies. We are at the same time inside and outside the object. Creative work demands an identification of body and mind, empathy and compassion. To this, we should add the pleasure involved in making by hand so evident in children's play and drawings, lost in the process of our ever more mechanized training. Le Corbusier's testimony in his last year of life showcases the importance of playing architecture every day with enjoyment.